Hey, welcome to part four here uh, in terms of disk management. In part four, we're going to talk about uh, LVM. There's certainly LVM, certainly a very large topic, but we're going to try and uh, stick to uh, the objectives and stick to uh, brass tacks here in terms of the uh, topics that we cover. So looking at the, uh, the objectives here for the RHCSA uh, exam, uh, specifically we have the create, remove physical volumes, assign physical volumes and volume groups, and create and delete logical volumes. So we'll look at that particular process. We'll also, we have add new partitions, uh, logical volumes, and swap to a system non-destructively. Uh, again, focus on that. <laughs> make sure that we're able to make modifications without removing whatever is in existence uh, currently. Um, also, looking at the topics here, um, create, mount, and unmount, use VFAT, ext4, XFS. So we've got to put a file system on our logical volume. Uh, and then down here, we also have uh, extending uh, existing logical volumes. Okay, so we need to know how to um, increase the size of the uh, the logical volumes that we have. So, you know, just to kind of do a quick sort of, you know, overview of uh, LVM. Uh, when, we're, when we're talking about logical volume manager, and I always try to describe it and look at it as a, you know, as a shim. Uh, between the operating system and our actual storage. So what we do is we have, you know, we have actual storage that could be, you know, like a full disk or that could be, you know, a partition on a disk. Uh, and then we we allocate that storage for uh, for LVM by uh, assigning it as a, and maybe you want to go with a square there. And these become physical volumes, okay? And then from there, those physical volumes then get added, okay, to a, uh, a volume group, okay. Now, the volume group will then allocate that storage into units, and the units are what we call those units. If we start chopping up this storage into individual pieces, what we call those units are extents, okay. And so the, the size of the extent that we use, you know, is going to be determined when we create uh, the volume group. Then from there, the logical volume manager can then create logical volumes inside of these volume groups. And this gives us a lot of dynamic flexibility in terms of uh, adding additional storage to a volume group, adding additional storage available to a logical volume, reducing the size of a logical volume. So there's a lot of different things we can do here inside of uh, LVM, but you know, focusing on what's explicitly stated here in the uh, in the objectives, let's go ahead and go out to our server here. So first thing I'm gonna do is see what I have currently for uh, partitions. So let's go ahead and let's say F disk minus L, and let's use device VDA. So you'll see I've got two uh, two gig partitions, I believe, on the device. And so right now they're uh, the type of the partition is just Linux system partitions. I'm going to change that to LVM. So I'm going to go ahead and say F disk uh, for dev VDA. Uh, and F disk, I'm going to use the type. Okay. And so for partition one, if I don't remember my list of codes, I can press L here. What I'm looking for here is eight. E, okay, uh, Linux LVM. There it is right there in the middle. I knew it was here somewhere. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and change the code there to AE for partition one. Click do a P, print my partition table. Let's do the same thing for partition two. All right, so on partition two, we're going to go ahead and select partition number. Set our partition type here. So partition type will be uh, 8E. Let's go ahead and print. Let's go ahead and write. And just as a habit, I always run part probe. All right. Now, <clears throat> so the, the three steps here, you know, we have the, the physical volumes. Physical volumes then get added to the volume groups and then logical volumes get created inside of those volume groups. So first off here, I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to type in PV 
Okay, and then I'm just going to go ahead and tab complete. Okay, so what you really need to remember PV, VG, and LV. So I'm going to create here. So I'm going to say PV create, and then I'm going to say dev VDA1. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing for VDA2 to make these available to, uh, to LVM. All right, so that's step one. Now, next thing we need to do is make our volume group. So I'm going to go ahead and type in VG here. And again, I'm going to look at my commands here. So this is what we want to do here is VG create. Okay. And I press tab. A number of these do support tab completion. Okay. So let's just call it um, volume group zero, zero. And then you'll see if I tab, it says it wants to add dev SDA to. Well, no, I want to add VDA. And actually, let's hold on for a second here. Let me go ahead and clear that line. Before I create that volume group, let me do a PV display, okay, for one of those physical volumes that I just created. So you'll see right here, it says that's physical size is two gig. Uh, it is not currently allocated. So it says the physical extent where it says PE size, it's just set to zero. Okay. So we haven't defined what the unit is going to be, the size of these physical extents. That is going to happen when we create our volume group. So if we want to use anything other than the default for our extent size, we'd want to specify that when we create the volume. I'm not going to <laughs> in this particular case. So I'm just going to say, um, excuse me, VG create create my volume group. I'm just going to call it volume group zero, zero. And then we're going to add dev VDA one. Okay. The so volume group zero, zero was created and let's go ahead and take a look at that. So again, I can type in PV. Remember tab complete will give you your list of commands. I'm going to do a PV display, uh, volume group zero, zero. Oh, all right, let me try that again. Let's do a dev volume group zero zero. Ah, I want to. Oh, sorry. Let's do a volume group display. It's the end of the day. See if it'll actually find it for me when I. Hey, that looks much better. <laughs> You know, when the computer is telling you you're doing something wrong, sometimes you should listen. But, all right, so here's my volume group, uh, zero, zero. Okay. And you'll see here that when it was created, the physical extent size was defined. Okay, So our physical extents are 4 meg, and so the total physical extents was 511. Okay, So when I now, I mean, if I do a PV okay, display on dev VDA, Okay. VDA one. This is the one that I've added to the volume group. You'll see that it tells me now I have the physical extent size defined on VDA two, which I haven't allocated yet. You'll see that we still read it still reads as zeros. Okay, so if I wanted to extend my volume group. I would do a VG extend. Okay, and then I would pick my volume group, volume group zero zero, and then let's add. Uh, VDA2. Mm -hmm. All right. And now if we do a volume group display for v volume group 00, zero you'll see here that I now have um, 4 gig of usable space allocated into 4, uh, four meg extents. All right. Now, so we've got the volume group. Okay. We've got the physical volume. So the physical volume is into the volume group. Now all that's really left is to create our logical volumes. Okay, so again, LV here, and then there's a number of commands that we have. But we want to create a logical volume. Now, <clears throat> I'll bring up the man page here for a second for LV create. When you're specifying the size of your volume, okay, if you want to specify the size in terms of um, meg and gig, then you're going to want to use cap L. Okay, if you use a lowercase l, then what you're doing is you're specifying the number of extents, and which would require you to do some math based off of the whatever unit size 
you you created your extents when you created your volume group. So typically for me, especially this late in the day, I'm not all that keen on doing a bunch of math. So I'm going to go ahead and say LV create and minus cap L and I'll say what, 250 meg. Uh, the name okay, will be keep these. I'll just call it uh, logical volume one, LV one. Okay. And I'm going to create that in volume group zero, zero. Okay. So again, you know, tab completion is available for a number of these things. Okay. All right. So that was created and I'm going to go ahead and create a second logical volume. Uh, and I'll go ahead and make it the same size. All right. And so if I do a, uh, LV display here. Mm -hmm. I'll pipe that out some more. There's my rel swap rel uh, root from the original installation, and there's logical volume one and logical volume two. Okay. Now, in order for me to use those, obviously I would have to put a file system on there. So if I say MKFS and let's do ext4 for the first one. Okay, so. And let's see, volume group zero, logical volume one. Okay. So we get an ext4 file system on that one. And for logical volume two, I'm going to go ahead and say mkfs uh, xfs. Okay, for my second volume group here, an xfs file system on that. Okay, and I'm a Quickly make a couple uh, mount points. So make a directory called one, and I'll make a directory called two, so I can get these guys mounted quickly here. So, and so I'm going to go ahead and mount um, dev mapper vg zero logical volume one to mount point one. And I'm going to go ahead and mount dev mapper volume group two, logical volume two here to two. Let's go ahead and make sure those are mounted okay. So DF minus H, cap T, and there they are. One and two are mounted just fine. All right. So I'm not going to go through making those mounts persistent just because we covered that, you know, in previous pieces, you know, I can run my, my block ID. Uh, and so there's the label uh, and the UUID. So take your pick, mount them by label or UUID, but they're down here. And, you know, we've covered how to do that in previous. So uh, we're not really going to deal with that. But there's one other thing that you know, we do need to deal with that is explicitly listed there in the objectives and that's expanding a logical volume. Okay. So if you're going to expand a logical volume, okay, then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to um, expand the logical volume and then you're going to need to resize or grow the file system inside of that logical volume. Um, if you were to sh reduce the size of a volume, you cannot reduce XFS, but you can reduce EXT4. You cannot do it dynamically. You'll have to U-mount the uh, ext4 uh, file system before you do it. But we can dynamically expand both the um, XFS and the ext4 file systems. Okay. So um, again, let's just kind of quickly go through that process. I don't want this uh, particular <laughs> um, lesson to drag out too long. So if I do an LV extend, okay. So this is the command that we need. Now we need to figure out what we're going to do. So you can use like a plus 250 meg, or you can um, just define the new size. Okay, so um, we're gonna do LV extend for, and we're gonna make the new size, I'll make the new size one gig for, let's say volume group zero, zero LV one. So now, take a look up here. 
the current size listed when we ran DF is 241 meg. Okay, this is an EXT4 file system. Okay. It's mounted. All right. When I run my DF command again here, you'll notice that the current file size continues to be okay, 241 meg. So we have extended the logical volume, okay? And now we need to resize the file system, okay, for that logical volume. So for ext2, what we want to do is we want to run the resize 2efs, okay, minus f for dev vg00lv1. Okay. Now when I run my df command, you'll notice that it now lists that as a one gig partition, okay? So that's the command that we would use. So LV extend to extend the logical volume and then resize to, to FS to resize the XT4. For, um, for XFS, we're gonna do this. Basically, we're gonna start out with the same process, right? We're gonna say LV extend and then the size is gonna be one gig and then logical volume two. Mm -hmm. We extend the logical volume. File system is still gonna appear to be 250 meg, okay? Because we have to run the XFS. And the nice thing about XFS is pretty much all of your XFS utilities will start with XFS. So um, in this case, we're looking for a grow. So we're gonna say grow file system minus D for dev VG00 logical volume LV2. Hopefully I did that all right. Let's check. And you'll see that the file system was in fact uh, extended. Okay. So I think that pretty much covers you know, LVM from the uh, from the objective standpoint. I mean, LVM is a huge topic. We didn't get into mirroring or snapshotting or a bunch of reducing volume size. There's a lot of other interesting, cool things that you can do uh, with LVM. But I did want to kind of stay on topic and on point in terms of the exam objectives. And so that finally concludes our four-part dismanagement uh, series. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you again.